It's October and here are some jobs that you can do in the kitchen garden this month. It's a really good time to sow broad beans. Um, all you need to do is plant into little cell trays or pots in a greenhouse or in a conservatory. Um, a good variety is Aquadulce Claudia, that's a really good one to sow in autumn. Then you overwinter them and you can either plant them straight out into a polytunnel or out onto a sheltered plot, maybe cover with some cloches um, and they'll be ready to harvest in June. We've got some here that we've actually sown about 10 to 14 days ago. They're just peeping through now. So it's a good time to cut the last of the summer squashes, things like the marrows and uh, the courgettes. Some of them might be quite large. You might find that some of your courgettes have turned into marrows. And also time just to get rid of all the foliage. Just basically cut them all back and then put them onto the compost heap. It's best to actually harvest all your squashes before we get any really hard frosts. And things like the gourds as well can also be harvested now. They're, they're not edible, but they're decorative. Or the your winter squashes, which are edible, these can be um, picked and put in somewhere warm for about 10 days and then placed somewhere cool and frost free to store. You can also, of course, if you've got a nice big pumpkin, it's a perfect time to start carving and scaring those local children with your at Halloween with some great pumpkin carving. Right, I've got something very sad to share with you here. This is the first time I've um, suffered with this, but I've uh, got leak mo moth damage. Um, relatively new pest, which is sort of spreading across the country quite rapidly um, and I'm in quarantine here in the kitchen garden garden I'm not allowed anywhere near our healthy leeks um, yeah leek moth so as you can see causes a lot of damage in a very short time and only about a month ago these leeks looked really this looked really healthy and I was really looking forward to these for my Christmas lunch but the little moth caterpillars have um, chewed away at the leaves and some sort of typical damage well, all over really I suppose. Um, so what happens is this sort of dull looking brown moth arrives in May, June time and there's another generation of them in sort of August, October time. Uh, filming this in October so this is sort of prime time for them and the later generation tends to be the worst I think and they're still active. I've been looking on here I have found some one or two little caterpillars still munching away and also some little pupae. So telltale signs your leeks get shredded like this for a start um, if you want to confirm that it's leek moth there is another pest which is a, uh, a leaf miner which actually leaves it inside the leaves that'll be a little maggot because that's a, a pest which is a fly um, this one is a caterpillar from a moth um, and if you can find any of the caterpillars they'll, they'll typical caterpillar shape they've got little legs on them um, whereas the uh, leaf miner will be actually living inside the leaves and uh, won't have any legs it's a, a, a say it's just a maggot so this was definitely leek moth because we found the caterpillars um, and you may also find little pupae on the leaves as well they'll munch away until they they're, they're mature until they're big enough then they'll make their way to the tips of the leaves or a, a bend in the leaf where they're well hidden and they'll pupate um, and they've got very sort of a strange little pupae it looks very very fragile it just looks like a little bit of webbing with the, the little uh, pupae inside no sprays you can use unfortunately so all you can do is uh, if it gets you know if you actually see the pest before you've um, um, before you've, you've managed to cover the crop up all you do is squish the little pupae that you find obviously pick off any caterpillars and get rid of those um, but ideally what you would do is as soon as you've planted your crop you know whether you've sown them direct and you've transplanted them out or you've um, grown them in trays and transplanted as soon as they're in the ground cover them over with some fleece or some very fine uh, crop protection netting some insect netting and that will stop the the adult um, moths from landing and laying their eggs and it's as simple as that really but if you if like me you hadn't seen it on before and you get caught out you can see exactly what it looks like just tattered foliage crop ruined diseases
come in and you start to get rot as soon as the winter comes in so all these are good for unfortunately is digging up and I will put them in the compost heap they'll be fine in there um, got a nice hot compost heap and mine's a rotary one so um, it'll rot down well and hopefully kill any pests that are in here uh, if you do get it pick up any crop debris any fallen leaves because the uh, insects might survive the winter on those um, but generally the little what will happen is the little pupae will hatch the moths will go and fly somewhere perhaps into hedges that sort of thing and survive the winter there but um, yeah no sprays you can use get your crops covered that's the thing as soon as you've planted them this month in the kitchen garden we've been trying out seven types of lopper seven yeah and we've just chosen three to talk about today so first of all em what have you got well i've got the kent and stowe loppers um, which are from marshall seeds and uh, what a nice pair of loppers these <laughs> are, are. They? oh what a great pair <laughs> racy, very racy. i love the color i mean yes. i know it's a girly thing to say but it's a very rare color to get in the gardening world i it think so yeah, you think this is maroon yes yeah, yeah. very tasteful yeah. but they are but joking aside they are beautiful quality um and what I love about these is there are, well, you've got the nice buffer here, mm -hmm. so it stops the jarring, and it's a lovely, mm. it is actually very soft. It's, it's well, it's hard, but it's firm, and it's soft. Mm. Stops the jarring. Mm. But then we've got this lovely way yes. of making them extend. Mm. I mean, look, on the click. Yeah. Look at that click. Oh, what a yeah, sound. We like a good click like we that, are, we? We, do. we do. They are really, really a lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely pair of loppers, yeah. those. Mm. Yeah. yeah, no need like for ladders with those. Or no. So those are Kent and Stowe from Marshalls. What yeah. have you got, Steve? I have got these uh, Wolf Garden loppers, power cut loppers. Nice and light, which I like. So you could use them all day and not really, not really feel it. Mm. They've got uh, nice coated blades, so mm. stop the rust. Very sharp, of course. Again, nice, nice buffers there to stop the jarring on your on your arms if you're mm. doing lots of heavy cutting mm. all day. Mm. And nice shaped handles. Yeah, I've not like seen that. these yeah. before. Unusual curve. Like a unique in the hand, shape on they? those. They are, yeah. Not so slip, really, not going to slip out of your hands. No, That's right. No, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very nice and very light. I can, yeah, I can see myself using those all day. Yeah. Well, very good. And I've got these, this monster, which Whoa. is from Spear and Jackson, and uh, they're ratchet loppers, and obviously they're, they're pretty heavy duty. They're not too heavy, actually, which you might think, given you know, the amount of metal yeah, in them. Yeah. But they've got a little lock, which you can just release, and then you have to send it back Whoa. there Ow. to release it, they're and then you, you wrap round that, that round your branch, and it gradually eats into it. And then you do that <laughs> to release Whoa. it again. Yeah lock it but they're also telescopic and these are more of the slide variety so you can do that and that's it and then you get them like that twist them back twist again them back in oh i see yeah twist them back in yeah and obviously you can do it to the, the height that you ladder. need we like staying feet on the ground, don't we? Don't like yeah. to be on that, just if we can help it. Really sharp good. blades, good for um, good, good hard for, uh, good, dead good for dead wood. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah more than your green wood. Yeah. Is, uh, but uh, you can see the, oh, the grip. Root, the grip yeah. There. Really good. So, if you need yeah. some heavy duty loppers, these are a good pair. Mm -hmm. Very good, nice selection. Okay, so uh, have a look in the magazine for the other four that we, we looked at as well. And you can see there's quite a, a variety on the market to suit your needs. Thank mm -hmm. you.